welcome, welcome to the service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. Pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. This is a service for New Year 2024. Before we get started, we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for sustaining us through another year and bringing us to a brand new year. You are the one that gives us breath in our lungs and you are the lifter of our heads and you you wake us every day and we just are grateful to you for life we thank you for all that you do father god we ask your holy spirit to come lead us guide us direct us open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to what it is that you want us to know, that you want us to incorporate in our spirit. And you always guide us daily as well. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here, always welcome here to lead us and guide us. And Father God, we just thank you for all that you've done all that you're doing now and all that you're about to do and we wait with anticipation because we know you are always in control this is your world that you created you have not given up control over it and it all belongs to you may your glory fill this earth and may we have more and more revival breaking out on this planet may more and more people come to the knowledge of yeshua and give their lives to him become born again and part of the family of god we pray this now in the mighty name the name above all names the most precious name of all our lord and savior the king of kings and the lord of lords yeshua hamashiach Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Well, here we are <laughs> on the brink of 2024. It's hard to believe another year's come and gone, has isn't it? And yes, this is a pre-recording. Uh, we are having to pre-record. Um, unfortunately, I can't really uh, do these live because I can't guarantee the the, the program that we're uploading is going to be working. Um, It kind of comes and goes in waves. Sometimes it will will upload with no problems, and other times um, it times out. This is is the problem we ran into in the summer, and this is when we actually started pre-recording. It was timing out, and I ended up, and this is our paid program, so that's not a good thing. Um, so I ended up have, uh, actually finding a free program, which actually backed up some things and, and got us through. Um, so when that, ha- when that happened, we started pre-recording, um, and just as I thought we could go back to doing things um, as we used to, then there was another glitch that occurred. And even most recently, we've been having some issues. And actually, the free program has actually got, gotten us through a couple of times. You probably see uh, there's Tovid on there. And that's because the other program didn't work. And Tovid actually was a was a lifesaver as far as that goes. So um, I, we may have to reconsider uh, what we're doing um, as far as that goes too in the future but uh for now we're going to just try to pre-record and then we have the backup of tovid for for our videos so in the upcoming year um we're going to do something a little bit different with our bible study just to uh let y'all know if you've been following the ministry i've actually made the announcement already Uh, We had just completed the English Standard Version of the Bible. We did two years of uh, Bible study with that particular version. Prior to that, we um, 
had done about two years with the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version. So those are all archived. If you wanted to binge listen to any any of those um, with the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version, there's 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 a little bit of Hebrew contract context put in there um, for you that you may not get in. Um, Ordinarily, uh, just going through a, you know the, a, a regular Gentile version, um, so it is it is the version of the Bible that we actually use for Shabbat service and special services. Um, so we 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 use that very heavily. Um, so this upcoming year, um, so in 2024, we are launching uh, as our main Bible study the New American Standard Bible, which is abbreviated NASB. So that will be our main Bible study. It'll probably take us about two years to go through. So um, uh, because we just don't rush through the Bible studies, we want to take our time um, through it. Um, But we're going to do something different um, this year. So it's kind of exciting. We haven't done this before. We are also going to do two other separate Bible studies, but one of them is only uh, is only the Old Testament uh, using it, it, it. It's the Tanakh using the the Hebrew scriptures, um, so it's the Jewish Bible Tanakh. Now, if you if you followed us back when we did the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, the the entire Bible study, this is also how. Uh, the Tanakh is laid out, um, how, how the, the Hebrew scriptures are laid out, it's a little bit different. Now, the first five books of the Bible are the same. They are the same in all Bibles. That is the Torah, and that is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, always the same. Um, now, beyond that, this is where it starts to get different. Um, because in the Hebrew Bibles, in in what you're going to find when we go through the Tanakh, is then the division is known as the Nevim, the Nevim, which is all all the books of the prophets, and then the Ketuvim, which is um, the writings. So now, just to let you know, it is still there's still the same amount of books. As it, as in all Old Testaments, and they all are all are in there, but it's just a different uh, order that they are put in. Okay, so we're going to be doing that as a separate Bible study, and then yes, we're going to include the New Testament here. Uh, we are going to do a Bible study uh, with the Passion Translation, uh, and that entails the New Testament plus. The book of Psalms, Proverbs, and Song of Songs. So that's kind of exciting. So that is new with what we're doing with Bible studies. And so so you'll see extra posts for the Bible studies every week. So we will start off with an introduction to each of those versions and then proceed um, to go on with the Bible study. I don't know how long it'll take for the the short ones that, you know, the the one with only the New Testament and the one with the Tanakh, Um, but the main Bible study uh, will be the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. So that'll take us about two years for sure. So that's where we're going with that. And um, as always, we will be doing all of the feasts and all of the Shabbats like we have always done. Um, So just looking forward to another year of that uh, with y'all and continuing to grow the ministry. So that is, that is ministry news for the upcoming year. And all I have to tell you at this point, um, oh, oh yeah, there is one other thing. Um, we are continuing our class. We started, um, a class, which is actually a college based class. Uh, we call it hearing from God. Um, um, it, it, it is a college based class, but we're not a college, so I cannot give college credits. Sorry, but I just can't do that. Cause we're not accredited as a college. What I do, uh, 
offer, what I do give out when I teach any class is certificates of completion. So if someone were to want to go off to Bible college, they can take those certificates and they can certainly contact me um, um, to ask me about it. Um, but they can take they can take those certificates. Sometimes they can get credit for that. So um, just to bear that in mind, we are we're continuing the class hearing from God. It is a delightful class. And um, for those that missed it um, this time around, uh, if you would like to uh, participate in it when we offer it again, I can't tell you when we're going to offer it again, because, of course, we're going to probably be doing other classes um, so I'm not sure when that will be, but I would definitely keep your name on a list and contact you when that would occur. Um, because yes, there are, there are books, uh, involved. Um, and that is the only cost, uh, cause I don't charge for the, for, for offering the, these classes. Um, but, um, and you can purchase these books through the used bookstores too. Um, if if I'm teaching a class that involves textbooks. So, and this one does actually. So, very good books actually. But anyway, that is, we're continuing with that class. And I, there's no time limit on that class. We're going at the pace of the group that is taking the class. And, you know, life happens and things happen. And sometimes we have to do other things. Um, we ended up actually rebooting this class because um, things happened. Um, as we know, the, the war broke out in Israel and we were actually devoting um, devoting the entire sessions to, to intercessory prayer and praying uh, for Israel. And um, so we still do. Um, we do set aside time on Tuesday evenings for for prayer and and um, we lift up prayer requests so if you are not engaged in this class and you need prayer and you would like us to pray for you uh, we do pray as a corporate body and we will be very honored praying for someone is an honor uh, to do so um, to lift to lift individuals up to the lord in prayer so don't hesitate to ask for that if you need that we'd be honored to pray for you. So now that is um, the ministry news at this point. And of course, as things happen, uh, I, I will definitely update you all um, on what's going on, you know, as our ministry grows and as, you know, we're, we've been, we're stable, we're a stable ministry that's been around for, for a little bit now. Um, <laughs> We are, um, we are non-denominational, just to let you know if this is the first time you're listening. We are Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA, but we are non-denominational. We are all born again, uh, born again and saved believers in the Messiah, saved by the Messiah, by grace, through faith. So yes, we are believers. We're part of the family of God and we're based on Ephesians chapter two, Jew and Gentile and one body of Messiah because we're all believers in Yeshua. So that's, that's really, that's really what our ministry is. We're not a denomination and, um, I have a newsflash. There's not going to be denominations in heaven. We are going to be believers worshiping Yeshua, born again believers saved by Yeshua, Jew and Gentile in one body of Messiah. So um, it's known as the one new man. Uh, and really that is what we're based on. We don't want division. One of the things, um, and I will talk about that. One of the things that I continually pray for, and I pray for, I I will be praying into 2024 with this is that the body of Messiah unite. What a powerful force we can be against evil when we are united and can do effective spiritual warfare. Now there are many of us, us that stand in the gap and the remnant, um, 
and and we do pray as a corporate body we need the rest of the body those that call themselves christian believers in yeshua we need you to join and stop with all the bickering and the doctrinal <laughs> arguments i do see this go on it's it's hard not to see it if you scroll anywhere in, in, in a main feed and you see, I, I am shocked to see how many people are doing this kind of stuff and how many people have become modern day Pharisees. Stop. You didn't save yourself. Yeshua saved you because you were a sinner that needed to be saved too. So stop pointing fingers at people. No one is perfect. The only perfect one that ever walked this planet was Yeshua. And this is very confusing to people who were seeking. We're living in such a world of chaos and calamity right now that people are seeking for truth. People are seeking for something that they don't have. They're seeking something better. And they're not seeking to see division and bickering among believers that they're not you're not showing them any different from what the world is and and by all means you have something that is different you have something that will save them you have yeshua you have jesus so please please if if you're, you're you have been caught up in that and you're listening please please stop because you may be preventing someone that is seeking, someone that is not born again and saved. You may be preventing them from taking that step. We need to be, we need to be good ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We need to be that beacon of light in this world that has gone dark and is going to get a lot darker. As the world gets darker, we need to shine. We need to shine that light that is in us, the Holy Spirit that resides in us because the world needs this. And to God be the glory. Being good ambassadors of the kingdom of God is not presenting yourself in such a way that is 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 to a believer is going to say, well, they're not showing me anything different. They, they say they're Christians. I'm not seeing the love. <laughs> I'm actually seeing, uh, seeing the same what the world has to offer. Think about that. When you present what you're presenting out there, are you shining that light? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? And our great commission is to share Jesus with the world and with those that are involved in this i never see anybody doing an altar call i never see anybody sharing yeshua with anybody it's just tearing down tearing down tearing down divide 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 so stop take a pause is what you're saying is what you're posting dividing breaking down the body of messiah or is it building up now, there are times that, yes, we have to give good instruction and truthful instruction, but this is going on. I see people, that's all they do. They never build up the body of Messiah. They never give anything positive. They never shine the light of Yeshua. And this is very confusing to a very confused world. Please, please, please. You know, that. You know, they say the tongue, the tongue is a very, um, it, it, it is a very powerful, powerful member of your body. And our fingers become what would we would be verbalizing. You're verbalizing it by, by word that you're typing. It's the same thing. So be, be mindful of what you're putting out there to the world. Because the world is really hurting. The world needs Yeshua. And you need to, 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 to share Yeshua with the world. Please be mindful of that. Please, please, please. That is my prayer for the body of Messiah. And it has been for a long time.
and I pray. You know, the body Messiah, like I said, can be such a force such a force against evil. And again, you know, I've given this an analogy many times and I have to go there because, you know, I, many of you know that I, you know, I am in the medical profession in the secular world. So yeah, I will go in, 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 make that analogy and make that comparison. We've got physical bodies. Okay. When one system of the body is sick and not working right, the other systems kind of rally and they try to compensate. But if it's, you know, if, if the body is not cooperating, you know, if that system of the body is just, just shot, it's not, it, you know, sooner or later, it's going to break down the other systems and you can have multi-system failure. We are a spiritual body of Messiah. Not everybody can be the hand. Not everybody can be the foot. We all have parts to play, but we all need to work in unison together to help one another. Amen? If one system is attacking the other, well, that is not good. Um, that's not having a healthy body. So we need to think about it in that manner. How can we help each other be healthy spiritually as well? Not everybody. And you also have to consider not everybody is on the same level. Not everybody knows what you may know. So you need to foster that. You need to, yes, educate is good but in a loving manner. And that is certainly not what I've been seeing. Think about where you've been and where you've come. Also, our Father in Heaven gives us all free will. So there's no, you, you don't have a right to force things on people either. So we have to be careful about that because that, that, brings you into the modern day Pharisee. <laughs> and you know, if as you read the New Testament, that Yeshua did rebuke the Pharisees quite often for the things that they were doing to the people. And he called them out. So so that that is all I'm going to really say about that. Just be careful how you represent the Lord. You're, rep you're, you're to be representing the Lord. And yes, when we look at the world, the world is completely upside down. What is good is being called evil. What is evil is being called good. I mean, how, how more upside down can we get as we look at our world? We've got people that think they're cats and dogs and <laughs> it's like, uh, it's it's beyond uh, it's it's unreal so <laughs> and and yes that is happening in our world believe it or not um very sad very very sad the shape of our world and what it is in and we need to pray we need to pray for our lost world they can they they have everyone has the ability to be found to be saved yeshua just didn't die for one one little section he didn't he is not part of a clique he died for the whole world so remember that even though they may not be there where you are it doesn't mean they can't get there and even though they may not have the knowledge that you may have that doesn't mean they can't get there but they need to get it lovingly. Jesus went about teaching the disciples lovingly. Now, did they get it all while he was here? No. There was, they, they, they didn't put it all together until he was actually, he was, he actually died and was risen. And the, and the, and the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit came upon them. So then it started, then things started clicking because there was things even, even as he was trying to prepare them for what he was about to endure, that they were not getting. 
you know, Peter, Peter even said, you know, I'll, I won't let anybody hurt you. Basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that. I'll even lay down my life for you. Um, he didn't get it when, when Yeshua was telling them, but he had been trying to prepare them all along. And when they lived through what they lived through and witnessed what they witnessed, then it all started clicking and it made sense what he was saying. So be kind to those that are not knowing what you know. Maybe you have studied the Bible 20 years. Maybe they have only begun. So you got to meet people where they are. Jesus met people where they were at their level. And I'm encouraging you to do the same. Otherwise, you're going to push them away. That is not winning souls for the kingdom. We don't need to scare people away and we don't need to be presenting ourselves, you know, as, <laughs> you know, as opposition, oppositional to each other either. We need to, to, we need to, you know, to shine the light. We do have something the world needs. We have it. And his name is Yeshua. So let's represent our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords in the best way that we can. Be kind to one another. We're all in this crazy world. We're all sojourners of this crazy world. As, 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 as Abraham said, made it known, I am just a sojourner here. He, he knew. This wasn't his final place of rest. And this is not ours either. We have a heavenly home to look forward to. We already know that. But let's help other people get there. We want to make heaven full. Amen? Amen. So let's work towards that in the next year. I'd love to see more and more revival. I was starting to get excited when I was saying, I mean, that that is one of the the high points of 2023. We had the Asbury re revival break out earlier in the year and seeing different pockets of revival break out throughout the world, which is incredible. And we had um, um, the Jesus Revolution movie come out, which actually I think helped to inspire uh, some more uh, revival as well. Seeing some people leaving Hollywood uh, and actually being born again, that is a wonderful, refreshing thing. And there are people that are, are in in that area that are believers that I think, you know, the Lord has placed people in strategic places. So there are really, there are, not all of Hollywood is evil. <laughs> I know we label it Hollywood, but um, <laughs> for a reason. But there are believers, believe it or not, in in Hollywood that, that are being very used instrumentally right now too. Um, and there are people coming to Yeshua. And it will increase. God is not done with this world, although we are getting closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. And we know that every day is closer and we long for that. You know, as we see our world increasingly get getting troubled uh, by the things that are going on in the world, we can recognize the signs and seasons that we're in. And yeah, you know, we are getting closer, but we need to occupy till he gets here. Amen. You know, that is what we're to do. We're not to go oh, throw up our hands and say, oh, well, he's coming any day now. Well, yes, he is. But we don't know the day or the hour. We can't just throw up our hands and just, you know, bury our heads in the sand and wait for our Lord to, to appear. We need to stand strong for the kingdom. And how do we do that? We need to pray to God to give us daily strength. The strength doesn't come from us. It comes from him. If we if we expected it to come from us, we'd be we probably we probably would uh, do ourselves in actually because it, you know physically because it is very tiresome 
there are times that, you know, we've talked on a Tuesday night that we've all felt tired and weary because we're standing in the gap. We're praying, uh, we're praying hard for this world that we're living in. And it's like, it's only the Lord that gives us daily strength and anointing and refreshment that can get us through. Amen. Amen. It is not by our might or strength. It is by his. He is the only one that can give us that strength to carry on. And he's the only one that we need to be looking to and leaning to. The world doesn't have what we need. Our Heavenly Father has what we need and always has and always will. And he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. When we became born again, and saved we became we we are part of his family he has put his name on us he has sealed us with his holy spirit it is only you know if we give that up he's not going to give us up jesus died for us yeshua died a horrific death on a cross so that all may come to him he didn't, like I said, he didn't die for just a, you know, a little group of people here on the planet and the rest he said, forget, you know, they can go to waste. He, no, he died for everyone. And even when you look at, you know, he died for all sins and sin is sin from little sin to big sin. It doesn't matter. Sin is sin. So um, you can look at the, is the most vilest of sins. And that person can still be saved. Because that is exactly what Yeshua died for. So no one is a waste case. No one is completely lost and unless they are unless they die in their sin and they're not born again and saved. But I believe God is merciful. He's just, but he's merciful. And he doesn't want anybody to perish. He did not create hell for his creation. For humanity, which is made in his image to be in hell. That's not the destiny that he had in mind for humanity. Hell was created for the devil. And the third of the angels that rebelled against him was never created for humanity but unfortunately there's people that have sold their souls and are there will find themselves there eternally that's very sad it doesn't have to be and i'm sure it grieves the father's heart for that to happen to anyone because he loves his creation he loves humanity he loved he loves you he loves me he loves everyone that has ever walked on this planet for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life God did not send his son. He did not send Yeshua into this world to condemn the world. But through him, the world might be saved. And that word might is a huge word because it involves that free will that God has given us. So it is a choice that everyone has to make individually. No one can make it for you. And I will get into that in a little bit with the altar call before we close out um, this evening. So I just want to, you know, want everybody to bear that in mind. We are living in trying times. Absolutely. Please also, you know, keep Israel in prayer. Um, at the end of 2023, you know, the, the last quarter of 2023 we know that war broke out horrific things happened and they did indeed happen um and there are still people being held against their will that we pray for their release some have been released and we pray for their healing because there has to be emotional healing 
for for those dear dear souls um for what they've endured they we pray for their their healing from that horrible encounter that they've they've gone through but we pray for the release of the remainder um, that are being held against their will no one should have to endure anything like that we pray for all those that are are, are oppressed in different areas of the world god did not oppress us that is demonic god gave us free will so that and, and god also freed us from captivity jesus actually did that he came to set the captives free from bondage and our bondage is the bondage of sin through through you know um with the devil and violence is not of god what we're seeing is in our world if it's if you're violent no there is no god not the real God anyway. The real God in heaven, the creator of all things, has not mandated anybody to kill on his behalf to get to heaven. That your reward is to kill, uh, annihilate, to get to heaven. That, he did not do that. Yeshua said, love one another. As I, as I have loved you. They will know. You are my disciples by the love that you share. The God who sits on the throne, the God who is in control of all things, a God in heaven has not mandated anyone to kill on his behalf. And I pray those that are caught up in that false doctrine that they learn the truth, that they actually look at those verses that they read in their Bibles to see how violent they really are and compare them with Yeshua's words. They are greatly and vastly different. Amen. Amen. So we need to pray for those that are lost, and they truly are lost. And everyone has that chance to be found. You know, it has to be demonic for somebody to do these evil, wicked things to others. There has to be a demonic presence, and we pray for the release, to, for them to be released of those demons that are within them. I pray 2024 will be a better year. I pray more and more people will come to the knowledge of Yeshua. And when they come to the knowledge of Yeshua, you can't be full of hate. You can't hate and love Yeshua. Because Yeshua is all about love. What he has done is all about love. Amen. Amen. So 2024, it can be a good year. We pray that it is. But let's work as a body of Messiah to do what it is that we need to do for the kingdom of God. Let's band closer together as a family of God and do what it is that we're called to do. We can do our part. Yes, the world, the world is going to be what the world is. And we know that when we were born again and saved, uh, we know that we are in the world, but not of it. And we need to, that, that is a distinction. Unfortunately, that is a division too. But we need to have that distinction because we're not to behave like the world. Not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we, need to, we need to keep that in mind as we walk through this world. And that can be really hard because we have to live in this world. 
but we definitely need to be distinctly different from the world. Amen. Amen. Well, I pray that the Lord blesses each and every one of you in this upcoming year with peace, the peace that passes all understanding. Look to the Lord for that. When you're in the presence of the Lord, whatever's going on in the world is going on in the world, but you can find that peace in him. Let him be your shelter. Let him be your rock, your high tower. He's got you. He loves you. He will never, ever forsake you. If you have never, if you're listening and you've never given your life to the Lord, uh, I'm going to open to an altar call now. I've been talking about Yeshua. I've been talking about salvation. Uh, Yeshua is is Jesus. It, his uh, Other people may refer to him as Jesus. Uh, Yeshua is his Hebrew name. It means salvation. And salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. The consequences of sin is death, separation from our Heavenly Father, and that's eternal. Um, We don't want to be eternally separated. If you die in your sins, you're not going to heaven. The world will tell you, oh, there's many paths that you can get to heaven. Um, And even actually... uh, forego Yeshua. And that's not true. That's a lie. The only way that you can get to heaven is by being born again and saved through Yeshua, because Yeshua is the one that came and died for everyone. You can't get there to heaven on your own. You can't get there by Buddha. Uh, Buddha was a man who died and he did not resurrect like our Lord and Savior did. He's Our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua is the only one that rose from the dead and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's coming again to rule and reign. He's the only one. Salvation can only, only be achieved through our Lord, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the only way. And he himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. So he doesn't lie. God does not lie. Yeshua is second of the Godhead. They they cannot lie. The Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world would have a path to redemption. The world could actually be redeemed of sin forever. Before Yeshua came, God had a had put through Moses had put that sacrificial system that was in place. And that was like a type and shadow of what was to come. Now, what happened was there was these perfect, now they had to be perfect in every way. I'm just giving the short, short uh, version of this. They had to be perfect, no blemish, um, On these, and and most of them were little lambs that were used for the sacrifice of the sins of the people. And um, they could not have a blemish. They could be not. They could not be lame. They had to be perfect in every way. They had to be the top choice, the finest, to give to the Lord. So there was a lot of sacrificing of animals that were done over year after year after year. Yeshua came and he was the final sacrifice of all. Uh, He is referred to as the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. He came. Perfect in every way. Blemish for he never sinned. So he could stand in the gap for, for us, for all of humanity. Um, where sin began was in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And they lost their glorified body. Um, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden and they could not get back in. 
and they also lost the dominion and authority over the earth because of their sin. What Yeshua did was reverse that curse. He came, he, he, he came as a human being because a human being brought that first sin to this earth. And so Yeshua had to come as a human being to reverse that and reverse the curse. And he did it because he was perfect. He was not born through the line of Adam. So this was very, uh, a careful plan of the Lord of God. Um, Yeshua was born of a virgin and God breathed his spirit. He breathed his spirit into Mary, or Miriam is her Hebrew name. So he didn't come through the line of Adam. Everyone else is born through the line of Adam and born with that original sin from generation to generation, not Yeshua. So he is the only one that could be that sacrificial lamb of God that took, takes away the sins of the world. And he did it. He did it willingly. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. He loved you. He loved me. Now, now some people will say, well, I wasn't born when that happened, so how can I be responsible? He died for everyone. Any, anybody that was ever going to be on this planet, he saw all, you know, he saw everyone's sins and all of those sins, whether it be small or large, were nailed to the cross of him. So people want to place point fingers at who's responsible for Yeshua's death. Everyone is. Because he died for the sins of everyone. So there's the answer to that. Um, and he loved, he loved you. He loved me that much to do that. If you had been the only person on this planet, he would have died for you. Because he doesn't, the Lord doesn't want anyone to perish and to be separated from him. God created humanity out of love and he had communion with Adam and Eve. He met with them, talked with them every day. So he loved, loves humanity and Yeshua died for each and every one. First John chapter one, verse nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's Yeshua. There's no one else that can do that. No human being can do that for you. Yeshua is the only one. You can, you can confess your sins to the Lord. He already knows. He's already forgiven you. And accept him as your Lord and Savior. He's waiting. All you need to do is accept him. All you need to do really is call on the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. He loves you. He also loves you so much that he... He took your illnesses upon him also by his wounds we are healed so if you'd like to become a member of the family of god you'd like to have eternal life and not be condemned to be away from god away from light and 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 be in utter darkness for eternity because believe you me you're Life in this physical body is only temporary, but your spirit will separate from the body upon death and it will go on forever. Where you decide to be is up to you. No one can make that decision for you. Yes, there are many of us that stand in the gap and pray for those that are not saved to get saved. But we can't decide for you. 
everyone needs to make that decision, that free will choice to choose Jesus, Yeshua, as Lord. He is coming again to rule and reign. And make no mistake, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Jesus is King. Yeshua is Lord. Because that's who he is. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. No one else. Even the devil will bow for King Yeshua. Don't miss this opportunity. Now, yes, I always do an altar call at the end of every, every, every service that I do, any teaching that I do. There will always be an altar call. So if you're just listening and you decide you're you're just going to think about it, that that's fine. You can always go back. You can always rewind and you can say this simple prayer with me now. This is all you need to do. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I understand that Savior is Yeshua. It's Jesus. I understand I can't save myself. I do believe Jesus died on a cross. He was buried and he rose again. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe he is very much alive and he's coming again very soon to rule and reign as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. Jesus, Yeshua. I thank you for paying my sin debt in full. I'm bringing it all to you and asking you to forgive me. And I know you've already died for me for anything that I've ever done. And I thank you because I know that I could not save myself. And I give you the glory and the thanks and the praise for doing this for me. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I'm declaring you as my Lord and Savior from this moment on. I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life that you offer. I believe you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I ask you now to send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me for the rest of my life in all of your ways. I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, that I am saved, I am healed, born again, set free, and delivered from sin and their consequences, and I'm also healthy of mind, body, and soul. I thank you, and I pray this prayer in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Word of God and not from other doctrines and worldly beliefs and um, fables and <laughs> fantasies and what have you, but actually teaches from the Word of God. How do you know that you're getting the truth and, and, and teaching from the Word of God? Get a copy of the Bible. Start reading it. Join a Bible study. You're more than welcome to join, you know, to partake of ours online. Um, but if you join a local congregation, most congregations have a Bible study. I encourage you, you can't get enough of the Bible. And every time you read the Bible, there's new revelation. When you sit down to read the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things for you as well. Holy Spirit is an excellent teacher. I am not going to tell you you have to get a particular version of the Bible. I'm going to tell you to sample them out. And you can do that through Bible Hub or Bible Gateway. You can sample and you can take a verse of the Bible type it out and then you can actually read different they will actually show you different versions of the bible i'm going to tell you the one that is most comfortable for you is probably you know the one that you should purchase as a hard copy for the first time um, you can get into other versions of the bible you know as you uh become more mature in 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 the faith but it is so important for you to be committed to reading the Bible uh, because this is 
God's instructional manual for us. This is, you can find the heart of the Father in this, and in the Bible, and get to know who our Heavenly Father is. This is his story for us. And it's a beautiful one. So also with that, don't get all caught up in denominations. As I mentioned earlier, um, in heaven, there's not going to be that anyway. We are one family of God. And what God wants with you is what he had with Adam and Eve from the beginning. He wants a relationship with you. You are his child. He is your heavenly father. You can refer to him as Abba. And as you read the Bible, you're going to see there was many, many, many people in the Bible that had a relationship with God. They could talk to God. They could go to, and they went to God for everything. I mean, King David is a perfect example of that. Uh, he ran, he, he communed with God. Uh, he was this, known as the sweet psalmist of Israel. He sang to God uh, when he was tending his father's sheep. Uh, he trusted God so much. Even when his life was in jeopardy, he would turn to God for everything. That's how much he trusted God. All the prophets had to hear from God. They had to have some kind of relationship with God to, in order to deliver God's word to the people, the judges, the same way. Um, they relied on God's message to them. Moses had a relationship with God. Moses heard from God. Absolutely. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them. So you too can have a relationship with God. Pray to him. Take your prayers and concerns to him. You can share anything with him. He already knows, but he loves to hear his children talk to him. He loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. It's all about relationship, not about religion. When you cross that line, you can get into the Phariseeism, which I talked about earlier. And as we move into the new year, you know, we need to look positively. Now, what is God? You know, God is already on the move. What is he going to do next? It, we live in exciting times. Now, I know um, I talked a great deal about some of the, the bad things that I, I see out there and what needs to, you know, what I pray for that needs to change uh, and also reflecting on some of the, some of the sad things that occurred in 2023 and they are very sad and still occurring. So there's, there's a lot we need to, we need to be mindful of and pray for, you know, because our world is definitely upside down, but we do live in exciting times because these are biblical prophetic times too. And, you know, when we think about that, think about Think about the disciples and when Yeshua left, how they yearned to be here where we are now. They thought it was going to happen in their time. Not so. Here we are, 2,000 years out, you know, and we are waiting for the return of our Messiah. And every day is getting us closer. And we do know that. So that's exciting. Um, even though we see our world going... <laughs> going pretty crazy at times. Um, it is a sign of the times, yes. But we do have, as I said, we do need to occupy. There's a job that we need to do. But we know um, we can be excited because we know Yeshua is coming soon. You know, and that will be a wonderful day for all of us as believers. We, we can long for that. For sure. So we need to also, you know, move forward in this next year in a positive move. How can we make our world a better place that we're that we're living in right now? And it, it is going to be a challenge. I mean, it's been a challenge all along, and each each year it seems to get a little bit more challenging because you know the evil one is throwing different things at us. But 
we don't need to kowtow to the evil one. Remember, Yeshua died for us. He gave us authority and dominion back in his name, in Yeshua's name. We need to remember who we are and who we belong to. And we need to exercise that authority that Yeshua gave to the church. This is our practice, too, because we're going to rule and reign with them. Amen. So, yes, we need to not cower. We need to be the church and stand up and do what we're supposed to do. And too much time has elapsed when the church did not want to make waves, did not want to, you know, did not want to stand up for what's right. And this is where we're going right now. And we can see by not standing up how bad our world has gotten. But we can say no, not on our watch. So, so, so let's, let's, let's aim towards that too. Let's aim towards being the church, standing for kingdom principle. We, we pray that prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, do you think the kingdom of God is going to look like our world looks like today? Oh, no way. No way. So let's look at it that way. Let's move into 2024 with a positive, positive outlook with an idea that we're going to carry out that great commission to share Yeshua with the world in whatever way that we can also get behind some of the ministries that are doing that, um, ministries that are out there and, and doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So um, that is all I'm going to say about that. Um, so we're going to close out uh, with the Aaronic blessing, which is known as the priestly blessing. And that is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. Now a little Backstory here, Aaron was the high priest in those days, and his sons were priests as well. The Levites' tribe were the tribe of priests. So um, God wanted to put his name on the children of Israel, and he wanted to bless them. And he wanted them to minister to the children of Israel. Um, with specific words in this blessing. And this is what the ironic blessing is. Uh, I'm going to say it first in Hebrew and then in English. And I just want to say, when you're born again and saved, you are born again into the family of God. God has put his name on you. He has sealed you with his Holy Spirit. You are his. The only way that you can not be his is if you decide to turn your back on God. And I don't know that people want to do that. That is not a wise move. He, once you've gotten to this point of, of being born again and saved, most people don't want to, want to, want to give that up. Because you realize what you didn't have before uh, you were born again and saved. And the Lord loves you. The Lord the Lord blesses his own. And the Lord has this blessed assurance and promise of the kingdom that is not of this world. And all you have to do is read the end of Revelation, and there it is. And that's what we have to look forward to. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say that, this, this ironic blessing for all of you. Ivarekaka Adonai ve'ishmareka, ya'ea Adonai panavelaka ve'ya semlaka. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. 
and I don't know, um, I'm hoping I didn't miss any of this. This was getting choppy and it stopped. So <laughs> if, if you've uh, gotten half sentences, I apologize. I don't know. I, it's, it, it's been, the recording's been stopping a little bit here and there and, um, hopefully everything's intact. Um, but anyway, y'all, I pray a blessed new year. Keep safe. Um, I pray that the, that 2024 brings you all peace, happiness, good health, and the love of Yeshua in your life. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Stay away from the darkness. Be careful who you listen to. Be discerning who you listen to. Uh, be very discerning as you walk through the world. There are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. The, the, the disciples have warned us about things. Read the Bible. I pray that people really tune into the word of God and learn how to rightly divide the word as well. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And may, may you have a wonderful 2024.